Hi guys, I'm Lauren Smith and I'm studying theoretical physics in Trinity. I'll be taking you through to 2021's higher level question three. Today's question is about investigating how the fundamental frequency of a stretched string varies with tension. So let's go. Of a stretched string of which we are told is kept at a length of 65 centimeters. Note that because that will be important for later. And its frequency will be varied with the tension T. This question should take approximately 20 minutes to complete. So let's begin. Okay, so we're asked to draw a labeled diagram. Note the word labeled here, otherwise you will lose marks. Of how the apparatus is arranged in this experiment. As you can clearly see from my diagram, you do not need to be an artist in order to get your full marks here. So for your first three marks, you do need to label and draw in your stretched string. For the next three marks, you need to label and add in your newton meter. For another three marks, your tuning fork. And for the final three marks, mention a fixed bridge, the paper rider, maybe a movable bridge, a meter stick, or maybe just even the length. I have it in yellow here. And that will get you your final three marks. 12 in the bag, done. For part two, we're asked to describe how the student used the apparatus even in the first place. So let's read out this given answer here and see where we can pick up marks. With the paper rider placed in the middle of the string, strike the tuning fork and rest its handle where the string meets a bridge. That's your first three marks. Adjust the tension of the string until it resonates strongly with the tuning fork i.e. when the paper rider jumps off the string. And that will give you your next three marks, mentioning the resonance. And there you have it, six marks, done. Now moving on to the third part of the section of our question where we're asked to draw a suitable graph to show the relationship between the frequency and the tension. Now, what is the relationship between the frequency and the tension? Well, going by this formula here, you can clearly see that the frequency f is directly proportional to the square root of the tension t. So our relationship is that f is directly proportional to the square root of t. This can also translate into f squared is directly proportional to t. And you can plot a graph of either with square root of t values or square root of f values. It doesn't really matter. Either one of these. I am going to plot this one up here. And as you can see here, I am going to redo our table of values with the square root of t. The reason why I'm not doing f squared is directly proportional to t is because, as you can see here, you can't, it is possible to plot, but it's going to be much more difficult because the f, when you square f, these values here are going to become exorbitantly high, which means that it's going to be a lot harder to scale your graph, especially with the graph paper that we're given in the exam. So I am going to plot the square root of t. Now, how do we get our values? We're given the value of t. We're not given the value of the square root of t, which is what we need to um, in order to plot our graph properly. So how do we do that? Let's get out our calculator. So our first value is 15. We just square root it. I'm going to give our value to two decimal places because it's hardly going to work. You're hardly going to graph um, a point to four decimal places. I don't think you can achieve that kind of level of accuracy as a human. So we're going to write down our values here. I'm going to give it to 3.87 and I'm just going to continue to do that as follows. And there we have it, our full table. And for having this full table of values, it is a good idea to write them all out because the examiner can explicitly see what points you will plot. You get your first three marks. Now let's move on to the actual graph. Here's the graph. Anyway, I have written down a title. I think it's a good idea to write down a title because you'll see, the examiner will see what you're plotting. What is the description of the graph? What you will get your marks for. Your first three marks will go for properly labeling your axes. You'll be throwing marks away if you don't do that. So please label them with the variable, its unit, and scale it properly and evenly and consistently. Like I'm going up here in hundreds for every kind of two big box here. The unit for the square root of the tension is just Newton to the power of a half, which is just 
square root of the newton. Tension is a force, therefore its unit is newtons. And there we have it. So there's three marks going for labeling of our axes. Now, plotting your points correctly, you get another three marks. So all of these little dots in green. Now, tips for drawing your best fit line, which gives you your final three marks in this section of our question. As you can see here, it goes straight through the origin. That's the same for all leaving cert physics graphs, because you're always going to be plotting two variables and a relationship between them, but it's always going to be a directly proportional relation. And the definition of a directly proportional graph is that it will go through the origin. Also, it is a linear graph as well. So that's your first point. So next, always use a ruler. Don't wing it. <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't work. Um, use a ruler. Otherwise, you will lose marks. And as you can see here, I've got this point here, this point here, this point here, this point here are actually kind of nice in that they're on the line. And I've angled the line so that we have one kind of point here. It's skewed to the left of the line, whereas this point here is skewed to the right of the line. So they kind of balance each other that night, that regard. And your best fit line will get you your final three marks. Now, you've probably asked yourself, why on earth does she have an extra point here and also in a different color? The reason why I have this marked in is for the next part of our question, part four. In part four, we're asked to use the graph to calculate the mass per unit length of the string. Now, in terms of a formula variable, the mass per unit length will showcase itself as the Greek letter M or mu. And where can we find a relationship between the slope and the mass per unit length? Well, we can use the same formula as we did earlier for the frequency and the tension relation, namely this formula here. Noticing that the mu is square rooted. I'm going to rewrite this in a little bit of a different kind of manner. These two things are equivalent. We can directly see that f is directly proportional to t. Now, what is the slope? The slope is actually equivalent to what's inside here. This is the slope. I'm going to label this as m. Don't confuse m for a mass. When I'm referring to m, it's going to be the slope. So we know that the slope is equal to, in the formula in tables book, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our y values are in fact going to be f. And our x values are going to be values of the square root of t. So the slope is equal to f, well the change in f over the change in the square root of t explicitly, but just bear with me for a minute. And because this now is equal to the slope, we now have a relationship for the slope. So once we find the slope, we can find the mass per unit length. Just stating this formula, by the way, will get you three marks. Also stating the slope formula over here will also get you three marks. And where do you find these formulae? The fundamental frequency of a stretched string. It's right here on page 59 of your formula and tables book. So you don't need to memorize it, which is great. Handy marks. We're going to page 18 of our formula and tables book. So in the kind of math section, we have the slope of a line. And it's this point here, or the rise over the run. Now moving on with the question. Before we find the slope or any numerical values, I'm just going to rearrange it as it follows. We know that the slope is equal to this. Therefore, we can find an expression for mu which after all your manipulation bogs down to this. Remembering that the M here is the slope. We know already from the top of our question, we are told that the length of the string is in fact equal to 65 centimeters, which is not an SI unit. So we're going to have to convert that. It's going to be 0 0.65 meters. Centi is times 10 to the power of minus 2. And if you put that into your calculator, 65 times 10 to the power of minus 2, we get that as follows in meters. So how do we find the slope? This is why I highlighted that extra point on the graph. For the slope formula, we have m is equal to 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which means we need two points. So what is going to be our x1, y1, and our x2, y2? Well, I am going to always recommend to use x1, y1 as the origin, because the origin is always going to be a point on a graph in physics that you'll have to draw. And also, you know it's right. Always, always, always. But then, if this is 0, 0, our formula for the slope just simplifies down to y2 over x2, which is nice. So, this point here, y, uh, x2, y2, it must be a point on the line of best fit. Don't take it from the values in the table because it's not guaranteed that one of the values of the table is going to be on the graph. And in some cases, it isn't, isn't. You need to show that you're getting it from your line of best fit at that point because that's the whole idea of a line of best fit. It's to find the most accurate values possible. Scrolling up to our graph, I've highlighted this. Remember this? This point in red. This point is going to be our x2, y2 point, which is going to equal 3, 1, 9, 5. That's what it's going to be. I kind of picked a convenient point, and I'd also recommend drawing dots to and from kind of, you know, the axes just to kind of make it clear that you know what your x and y values are. That's going to be our second point. So let's plug it in. The slope is equal to y2 over x2, which is equal to 195 over 3, which, putting it into our calculator, is just equal to 65, which is handy. It's a full number. Now, we have our expression for mu. Let's plug in our values. We've got L and M. Mu is equal to 1 over. 2L, which is the length, which we found out to be 0 0.65, and M, which is 65, and that's going to be all squared. So what is that when we put it into our calculator? Be very, very careful. Always add in your brackets for each variable because we want to get it exactly right. And this turns out to be a very small number, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And the units being kilogram per meter because it's mass per unit length and the unit for mass is kilogram the unit for length is m so that's a good way of remembering it where do you get your final marks from you get your final marks from getting the slope that's an extra two marks and our final two marks go for our answer